this is mono. Things I say to myself while hanging laundry. Ruth Stone. If an ant crossing on the clothesline from apple tree to apple tree would think and think, it probably could not dream up Albert Einstein or even his sloppy mustache or the wrinkled skin bags under his eyes that puffed out years later after he dreamed up that maddening relativity. Even laundry is three-dimensional. The ants cross its great fibrous forests. From clothespin to clothespin, carrying the very heart of life in their sacks or mandibles. The very heart of the universe in their formic acid molecules. And how refreshing the linens are, lying in the clean sheets at night, when you seem to be the only one on the mountain, and your body feels the smooth touch of the bed, like love against your skin, and the heavy sack of yourself relaxes into its embrace. When you turn out the light, you are blind in the dark, as perhaps the ants are blind, with the same abstract leap out of this limiting dimension, so that the very curve of light as it is pulled in the dimple of space is relative to your own blind pathway across the abyss. And there in the dark is Albert Einstein with his clever formula that looks like little mandibles digging tunnels into the earth and bringing it up grain by grain. The crystals of sand exploding into white, hot, radiant turbulence smiling at you his shy, bushy smile along an imaginary line from here to there. Bob Ward, 1955. Baron Wormser. I've read this poem so many times. I can see him. I can see Bob Ward in front of my eyes. Two nights a week, Bob Ward, the insurance man, whose office stood beside the hardware store, got in his car and drove to other rooms in other towns to meet another man they loved and held a joy that terrified the sickly thrall of day. The words that seemed to probe his every moment fell away. The hell of every shame and fear, each nod and smile, the famous business handshake unplumed in the cock's hard grace. He prayed for himself later in the clock-bound dark. He prayed for the bachelor soul that seemed not pith but fog. He wept a few glad tears and watched the sun sneak up. The slightest pink flame simmered on the horizon. He chose a tie to match his suit. 
then headed to the cafe. Morning, Bob. Where he took his determined place. The unsaid. Stephen Dunn. One night, they both needed different things of a similar kind. She solace, he to be consoled. So after a wine deepened dinner, when they arrived at their house separately in the same car, each already had been failing the other with what seemed an unbearable delay of what felt due. What solace meant to her was being understood so well you'd give it to her before she asked. To him, consolation was a network of agreements. Say what you will, as long as you acknowledge what I mean. In the bedroom, they undressed and dressed and got into bed. The silence was what fills a tunnel after a locomotive passes through. Days later, the one most needy finally spoke. What's on TV tonight? He said this time. And she answered. And they were okay again. Each forever would remember the failure to give solace, the failure to be consoled, and many, many future nights would find them turning to their respective sides of the bed, terribly awake and twisting up the covers, or just as likely moving closer and sleeping forgetfully the night long 